how to make corners for your ultimate dungeon terrain, today on Dungeon Craft. If you enjoy our content, why not subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master coming to you from Dungeon University and this channel is about running the ultimate game of D&D. And for me that means terrain and minis. In particular, I show you how to make a piece of terrain I call Ultimate Dungeon Terrain, UDT, which you see behind me, which I'm going to tape down. And we put this on a Lazy Susan and now the dungeon can come to you. See how cool that looks? Last month I showed you how to make ultimate dungeon walls because you asked for them and they are, they look really cool close up, but at the same time you can still see over them so it doesn't block the line of sight from your figures. But one of our viewers and Facebook group members, Craig Bartlett, had what I think is an even better idea. It's these, these little corners. These corner pieces, which are awesome and easy to make, you put them on your UDT, it makes a room like that. It indicates the boundaries of the room, but people have even better line of sight in here. And these are really simple to make and super durable, and I'm going to show you how to make these today. And I thought, as long as we have our pink styrofoam insulation out, we may as well do a twofer, and I'll show you how to make a staircase. Dungeon corners and a staircase so we can get down into the dungeon. Let's go check it out. Here's another overhead view of our ultimate dungeon terrain with the corners in place, and we can adjust the size of the room as we see fit. Up close, they look terrific. This looks like professional looking terrain, but for a fraction of the cost. As a matter of fact, if you already have that pink styrofoam, then it's gonna be practically free. We're just gonna cut off a one and a half inch by one and a half inch square with our utility knife and we're going to cut them into triangles. Then I draw out the walls and cut away the center of the triangle till it looks like a V. I draw a few mortar lines using a ballpoint pen. Here I'm using the Pilot G207 roller. Using a smaller utility knife, I cut down then across, taking away some of the styrofoam. Moving slowly, I can always take a little more away if I I don't think that there's enough gradation. And then I draw some mortar lines on the, the rest of the piece. Notice I go around the corner because that's supposed to be a stone block. And then I add more blocks, connecting everything and making a mixture between large ones, medium ones, small ones, so that it looks fairly natural. Notice I don't let those mortar lines meet up. You want to stagger the line so it looks like those stones were put into place one by one as opposed to being one brick wall with uniform sized bricks. I do the inside as well and before I forget it's important not to make that lowest layer too thin because we want it to be durable we don't want it chipping off. So let's give it a quick look from all around from all the different angles and it looks good. We'll press it with some aluminum foil to give it texture and we're going to do this three more times so that we have four corner pieces. Next let's go to our staircase. I'm going to cut out a rectangle. It's two inches by four inches. That pencil line in the center is at the one inch mark and I drew it there because that's where the landing for the first flight of stairs is going to be. The first flight of stairs is going to terminate at the one inch mark from the left. Then we're going to have a one inch landing and then another elevation after that inch. I trim the excess away because it's a lot easier because that's going to be less foam to cut through. And then I want to stress this, this is just going to be eyeballing it. I cut down, then I cut across to make the stairs. My rule of thumb is you want to cut the stairs pretty thin. You can always take more away, but you can't put it back. So I just cut down, then shave across until it looks like the elevation is right. Now here, I ended up where the elevation was, it was not natural enough. So I ended up widening them and I'm going to take a little bit off that, the piece on the top. There we go, that's the top flight of stairs. Now for the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. And there's my giant hand in the way blocking the shot, but I think you get the idea, I go all the way to the bottom. I draw on the stones just the same way I did with the corner pieces, and it really didn't take that long, it only took about 5 or 10 minutes each side. 
To pass the time, you can always watch more Dungeon Craft videos. We have nearly 80 for you to see. And for your convenience, I'll put a link to our latest campaign update, The Horror of the Hobgoblins, in the upper right hand corner. Again, make sure the stones at the rear of the staircase wrap around so it looks natural. And don't draw any stones on the top. We're going to leave the, the staircase surfaces flat. I am going to bevel them. I'm going to take a little bit of the edges off so they look worn and natural, as if they were really carved out of stone. When that's done, we're going to paint the surface with Mod Podge, which is watered-down PVA white glue. And I'm going to add to it some craft paint, and it's going to give the, the surface a dark gray color. And it will dry quickly, but form a protective shell for the piece. And because I anticipate these pieces being handled a lot and getting banged up, that's going to be really necessary. And it's going to be the first of three protective layers I'm going to put on the piece. After about 30 or 45 minutes of dry time, I hit it with Craft Smart Tan Craft Paint. I'm watering it down so that it flows into all the cracks. Next, I do a dry brush with Craft Smart Suede, which is one color lighter than tan. So I'm going to take a dry brush, wipe it off on a paper towel, make sure there's no paint left there. And I work really quickly, brushing it over the surface, going in both directions. And that suede color will come off on the raised areas, but leave the recesses dark. I let that dry for about 20 minutes, then I'm going to coat it with a black wash. This formula comes from Black Magic Craft. It's about 8 parts water to 1 part black paint, and a drop of brown paint and green paint to give it a sort of grimy appearance, and a tiny drop of dish soap to help it flow. When you're finished, you want to let the piece dry overnight if possible, or at least several hours before proceeding to the next step, which is dry brushing it again with that original tan. This step will really lighten those raised surfaces, make them look like stone, while keeping those mortar lines dark. Then we're going to coat it with Elmer's Clear Glue, and this is our second protective layer. And I'm just slathering it on with a brush. Make sure when you get done, you're going to wash this brush carefully with soap and water. If you do that, it will preserve the brush, and you'll be able to use it again. I've used that brush for years, but you got to make sure you clean it properly. One more quick tip is to place the completed pieces on a sheet of wax paper. Clear glue will not stick to wax paper. You'll be able to pull it right off. Here's a piece of self-sticking vinyl floor tile, and we're going to be using this as a base for our, our piece in order to protect the edges. I'm going to size it up, just eyeballing it, and I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge, and that will protect the piece from drops and everyday use. I'm just going to cut it out with craft scissors and trim around the perimeter to neaten it up. Here it is close up and that floor tile will really protect the edges and, and give it additional structural integrity. Although the surface seems sticky, it is coated with glue, it's, it's still not going to be really firm so you want to take some white glue and just glue that down. You don't want to use hot glue because it would melt the styrofoam. I do the same thing for the stairs again, reinforcing it, giving it structural integrity, and helping to give it a little bit of weight so that when it's actually on the surface, you can tip it like this and it'll snap back right into place. I paint the corner bases the same color tan as the walls, wash it, and dry brush it. That way it camouflages it so it looks just like the UDT. And from the player's perspective, sitting back from the table, you won't even notice it. Look at how cool that looks, it's almost invisible. The final step is to hit it with Minwax Spray Satin Polyurethane, and this will provide the third and final layer of protection for the piece. And now your pieces are ready for the table. Total crafting time, about two to three hours, not including dry times. So if you don't already know, on Dungeon Craft we do more than just craft terrain. We also paint minis, but also every month I do a campaign update in which I show you how I design encounters in my own campaign. And I'm not just a talking head, I don't just tell you what I'm doing. Instead, 
we illustrate it and bring it to life using painstakingly, lovingly painted models and make a little movie out of it. On other Thursdays, I give you advice on how to run a better game of D&D and be the ultimate dungeon master. So there's a lot of content here to look for. Please subscribe, click that bell icon, and join us on Facebook. This has been Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table with your ultimate dungeon terrain. And may all your rolls be 20s. If you enjoyed today's content, click the Dungeon Door logo to subscribe to the channel and the bell icon to receive notifications. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at DungeonCraft. <laughs>